Hi ladies. Today we're actually going to be moving into our evaluation and management chapter 11. Um, I'm going to warn you it's a nine day chapter. Uh, there's lots of information but as usual we're going to take it little bits and pieces at a time. So this is going to be your lecture number one. Uh, I'm going to just let you know that at the beginning of your chapters you have your objectives and this is where I'm going on it. Your objectives is going to go through one little section of your chapter at a time. And so we are going to be going through the first portion of these objectives today. I want to say it's one through five. One through five. Okay, so chapter 11, e and Services. Um, our first objective is identify and explain the three factors of e and code, code assignment. The factors are place of service, which you're going to notice is POS most of the time in medical documentation, or even if you're looking at your HIC performance as POS. Type of service and patient status. Now we're gonna start with place of service or POS, and you may wonder, where do I go to find that? Well, I'm gonna show you. Get your CPT manual out, and if you'll just look, here's your modifiers, but your place of service codes are here. So for example, if you were having a baby at the birthing center, or someone was having a baby at the birthing center and you needed to know what place of service code that you have to bill out for that, that is gonna be 25. So you have ambulance, office, home, assisted living, group home. So just take a minute and kind of just read through this. This is very interesting. You wouldn't think that we have all this detail, but we actually do. So that is where you're gonna find your place of service codes. Okay, the place of service explains the setting in which the services were provided to the patient. I just told you they're found in your CPT on the first actual paper page. Um, read through the name of services to decide what your place of service code is. For example, if we were gonna do office, it's place of service code 11. So, all right, we're gonna move to our next board. I'm gonna try not to jiggle y'all around too much. Make you need Dramamine. Yeah, I think we can see that. All right, I think we can see it. Okay, so number two of our factors was types of service. This is the reason that the service is requested or performed. For example, it can be in consultation, admission, newborn care, or even an office visit. So that's our factor number two. So our factor number three is patient status. Guys, you need to know these. You have to know the definition. If you don't know the definition, you're gonna mess up these codes every single time. So I would advise you to write these down and really learn them. So patient status could be a new patient or NP. These patients have not received professional services in the past three years from the physician or the physician within that group. I am going to give you an example of what this means. Okay, so say that I was going to Red River Cardiology and I saw Dr. Davis and he did my cardio uh, checkup. And there's three doctors there, Dr. Davis, Dr. Chaudhry, and Dr. Landrenet. So I saw Dr. Davis this year, and six months from now, I wanna go back and have another checkup, but Dr. Davis isn't available, so I'm gonna see Dr. Chaudhry. He's in the group with Dr. Davis. They're all in Red River Cardiology, so I'm not a new patient, but, if I decided that I was gonna to go to a different cardiologist, say Dr. Friedman, that's a different group. I would be a new patient. So if you take your kids to Healthy Steps Pediatrics and you saw, I don't know all the nurse practitioners anymore, but you saw Dr. Grant and then you saw Dr. Robin. And then uh, on Saturday they were sick, so you had to go see Dr. Mansoor in the hospital. Guess what? It's all the same group because he owns Healthy Steps. That's all one big clinic. But instead, if you went to see Dr. Rhodes, Dr. Rhodes is in a facility all his own. He has nothing to do with that group. So that's how those groups work. An established patient is a patient who has received services in the past three years within that group. All right, an outpatient is one who has not been formally admitted. And an inpatient is one who has been formally admitted to the healthcare facility. Okay, so I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail. I'm gonna grab my notebook and I'm gonna read it to you guys. 
I didn't want to write all this on the board, so I'm going to read it to you. Outpatient versus inpatient at a glance. An inpatient is a person who is formally admitted to a healthcare facility, like a hospital or skilled nursing facility. If you have not been formally admitted to the hospital by a doctor, you are not an inpatient. An outpatient is a patient, whew, I'm gonna slow down, I'm getting out of breath, who a doctor treats who may receive ambulatory care at a hospital and may even spend the night, but is not formally admitted to the facility. Outpatient and inpatient can look and feel very similar because they both take place in a hospital. But you can ask the doctor who is working with you if you are being formally admitted. Remember the key phrase is formally admitted. Now I read that in great detail and I'll show you just a minute. Objective to differentiate between new and established patient. Let's take a look at the CPT on page five decision tree. So we're going to grab our CPT and we're just going to go to page five. In our E&M services, by the way, go to the red part. Everything that I'm telling you is found in the green, your guidelines, in your CPT. So this is a decision tree. I drew it in my notebook, but I wasn't drawing it on the board. So you guys look at the decision tree and kind of ask yourself those questions. The first little big blue box is, received any professional services from the physician, qualified healthcare professional, or other physician, qualified healthcare professional in the same group of same specialty within the past three years. Now, this is gonna give you some questions and answers if you need a map to tell you if they're inpatient, or I mean, if they're established, or if they are a new patient. I don't know how I got turned around. I jumped in head. I'm already on inpatient, or outpatient versus inpatient, and that's on the other board, but that's okay, you get the, you get the gist of it. All right. So over there, we talked about patient statuses and inpatient and outpatient is one of the patient status. I'm trying to get y'all there. Hang on, it's not cooperating. I think you can see all that. Okay, so objective three, differentiate between inpatient and outpatient. And I've read all of that to you. I actually gave you a very detailed description. This is just pulling out the important part of those details. An inpatient is a person who is formally admitted to a healthcare facility. An outpatient, a patient who a doctor treats who may receive ambulatory care at a hospital and they may even spend the night, but is not formally admitted to the facility. The key phrase is formally admitted. I'm gonna tell you something. This is what our information says. We're gonna learn it this way, but I never, ever, ever on a medical record saw formally admitted. I just saw admitted. So, but I'm just telling you because the information's sad. <laughs> so uh, they really go into a great bit of detail when you're, when you're learning, but when you get your medical records, you're gonna have to learn to glean just by the amount of hours they've been there because you could only be um, an outpatient or an observation patient for so long before you have to be admitted. But we'll get into that a little bit more later. Objective number four, explain the levels of e &M services. And again, page six on your CPT, I just want to point out everything that I'm telling you, everything that I'm showing you is in your CPT. What can you use when you take your exams? Your manuals. Everything, every question that you're going to have is actually in the guidelines in your e &M section of your CPT. So it's a lot of information, but you guys have a little bit of a security blanket because it's right here. Okay, so we're going to explain the levels of the e &M services. Okay, there's seven components of an e &M. There's a history, examination, medical decision making, MDM. You need to remember that that's what that stands for, MDM. Just like DME, durable medical equipment, you guys have to start remembering those things. So MDM means medical decision making, counseling, coordination of care, nature of present problem, we always call that NPP, and time. So history, exam, MDM, counseling, coordination of care, nature of presenting problem, and time are all as seven components of the e &M. If you need more time to take notes, you can pause the video.
Oh, finally our last board. Let's see, I hope you can see. I'm gonna have there we go. Objective number five, review the key components. There are three key components when selecting the code that should be billed. These components are history, examination, and MGM. I'm going to be getting into those in a great amount of detail, but that will be a little bit, that'll be your next lecture. So objective number six says analyze history. The history provides insight to the reason for the patient encounter or the chief complaint. The history of present illness, the HPI, provides a review of systems, ROS, based on the patient's perspective and past family social history. We call that the psh. <laughs> That's what we call it. Anyway, so that is what, this is the first part here. This is one our first key component here. And this is the history. Things I want you to remember, CC, chief complaint, HPI, history of health, present illness, ROS is review of systems. I'm not gonna make you remember. <laughs> That's the past family social history. MDM, medical decision-making, NPP, nature of present problem. NP is new patient. Um, and I think that's it. Again, if you guys want more information, if you just want to reread it, well, you're reading it in your chapter, but you need to remember that everything you need to know about this is in the guidelines in the EM sec E&M section of your CPT. Bye guys, see you later.